album is called You Can't Stop Me because, well, you can't stop us. Yeah. And, no, mainly because um, there was rumor of a set of lyrics that Mish had written in his iPad, which I remember when we were working on a couple songs prior to the incident and everything that happened. I remember watching him writing down lyrics and uh, there was just so much downtime, I, but we heard that, there, that these lyrics existed. And uh, by the time we were ready to jam all in a room together, we tracked down those lyrics and uh, we all read them together and the song was called You Can't Stop Me. And it was like, holy fucking shit. It was just, too, it was too fitting, you know what I mean? And it all, it just was like, well, there's the theme of the album and there's a fucking real fire into the ass to, to get us going and writing an album, so. It's called You Can't Stop Me, so fuck with it. <laughs> The album was produced by Steve Evitz um, uh, at the Omen Room. I think that's the name of the place. Yeah, it's kind of an, a nameless studio in Garden Grove, California. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, uh, but uh, you know, he's uh, he had worked with the band uh, previously on the Black Crown, and uh, we decided to go with him again because the dude's a total badass, and he's written a bunch of. Uh, sorry, not written, but he's uh, produced a bunch of our, our favorite records. And, we call uh, him Stone Cold Steve Evitz, yeah. and uh, or Steve Longevitz. Sting Long, Steve Longevitz. Longevitz. Steve Edits. Steve Edits. Uh, but not so much Edits because we try and keep it real. <laughs> but no, that's that's another thing about Steve is like he's a uh, really understanding of our uh, drive towards just getting our natural feeling because we write our music together and it's not like one person is writing all the songs so when we get in the studio he's there to like make sure that we're still tapped into the fact that we're a band and we're recording a, the band's music and not just the guitar parts or just the drummer wrote this part so it's like we uh, we work together with him really really well and uh, he's a good friend and an awesome producer yeah Well, I mean, uh, for me, it was a, a step uh, in a direction that I had been always wanting to to, to go in as far as writing. Uh, you know, actually sitting in a room and jamming songs out, uh, taking uh, riffs that um, the band had kind of come up with on their own, and then sitting in a room and actually being like, "All right, let's call this riff this, call this riff that." and really work it out to be a song. And then, um, you know, once we had a couple of skeletons put together, um, that's when Steve came in and started, uh, you know, helping us really f put foundation down and, and get these songs to have a little bit more skin and muscle. And then we went in and added the teeth and eyeballs in the, in the studio. But I think even more though, like we had a couple of skeletons of songs and then when when you really got involved and like it was obvious that you know you were just amped and like you know just like you said you were anxious to get involved in that kind of situation once once you know Eddie put down some lyrics and actually recorded some vocals and we actually had new like this is what suicide silence is going to sound like on you know from now on like once that happened that was when it was like holy shit yeah. like we got some fucking some real some fire on our hands, and it was it was a, it was a good feeling uh, having new music and having Eddie on it, and everyone just being anxious and uh, feeling good about it. And once there was, there was only like two songs with with lyrics and vocals, but once we had those two, yeah, it was just like everything started just yeah. coming out, and it was it was awesome. <laughs> 